Got my grandson Cash, 14 years old, going into high school next week. Helped me uh, with this ST1300, I think it's a 2008 maybe, I can't remember now, 2006 or eight. Can't see on the frame down there. And the hydraulic sleeve cylinder's gone. All the oil's pissing out on the ground down here. It's a common problem with these bikes. There's a couple videos on YouTube on uh, getting at it and getting it off. It's really difficult. I, I already started. I forgot to turn the camera on. And uh, we got the two um, lower covers off. And they're held on by these 5 millimeter Allen head screws. And then there's also a couple plastic um, uh, clips, connectors. One in here, one on the other side. One here, one on the other side. And then there's four on the bottom, but his were all missing down here and broken. But the slave cylinder, where's my light? <clears throat> there's the hydraulic slave cylinder right there. There's the bleed nipple right there. And you can't get at it. You gotta get it from underneath and it's really difficult. The Honda shop manual says you gotta drop the engine to, um, to replace it, but a lot of guys do it this way, so I'm gonna to try to show you how I'm, how I'm gonna do it. it. Looks kind of wet under this engine too here. Put this light on. Like it looks like a little bit of oil leaking somewhere. Maybe that pan gasket. But I also noticed on this fork here, a little bit of oil and the fork seal is gone in here. So I'm going to send them that. That side's good. This side's dripping oil. So I'm going to have to fix that as well too. Very low kilometers on this bike. He's offered, he's offered it to me to buy. And, uh, Cash, you're more agile than me. Tell me how many kilometers are on this bike. You, you stand on that and, uh, see if you can see the kilometers on there. I can't remember, is it 30 or 50 thou? Not very many. Does the key have to be on for the kilometers? Uh, 10,059. What's that? Or 10,059, yeah. 10,059. Read all the numbers out. Oh, that's the... <laughs> that's a trip meter. should be more than that. I thought it was around 30 or 40K. That's the... Does the key have to be on for it? I think so. Uh, I can't see. I should go all down there. You hold this and zoom in and tell me what you see. Yeah, it's digital. It should be... Oop. Yeah. Say kilometers there somewhere? Turn it back on. Good. Oh. 54,000 kilometers, yeah, not very many, 30,000 miles, 31, 32,000 miles uh, for this bike, which is really good for these bikes. You could put um, easily 300, 400,000 kilometers on with, with a bit of maintenance. This is the, uh, they call them the Pan American, um, Honda ST1300, V4, horizontal, and um, they were the, the European police bike in Italy, Brazil, or, uh, Spain, Europe. A lot of the countries were using this because it's so reliable. Quick, fast, reliable. Anyways, we're gonna get started on that clutch. It's a Saturday morning. Just got back from camping. Been gone for a week. Time to get back at the uh, like <laughs> my garage is just a freaking mess. It's unbelievable. Oh, I can't wait to get everything done. Some year. <clears throat> this bike's done. This this bike works beautiful right now. Back to the ST thirteen hundred. Um, oh, turn the music down here. Get some copyright infringements. 
Okay, let me see. I left this bike about a, a week, 10 days ago. And we're gonna do the clutch slave cylinder, gonna get it removed. And then I'm gonna do another video, pulling the front end off and doing the fork seals on this. I'm just looking for my st stool here. There it is. Uh, so I drain the oil. Took the oil filter out, so some guys can take that slave cylinder off with the oil filter in there, but <laughs> you can't see nothing. When you get, I got to get my light here so you can see. But when you take the oil filter off, you can actually see it and see the hoses and see the, what's going on. Let me get my light. Okay, I'm on the left side of the bike. There's the side stand, and right up in here. You can see where I took the oil filter off right there. And then right in behind it up here is the uh, slave cylinder right there. But you see this rod, this shaft here right in front. That's, that's the shifter shaft. So I'm gonna disconnect that because that's obviously gonna be in the way. It's right in front of it. So you can see the the one eight millimeter bolt. Get my screwdriver right here. Right there. Where am I here? Right there, you can see the one eight millimeter there. It's holding it on, and there's one on the opposite side over here. But before you undo those, you want to undo the banjo bolt up top. Right up top here is where the 12 millimeter banjo bolt is for the hydraulic line. So to get that, you gotta get a 12 millimeter wrench up above, above uh, here. I don't know if you can see my hand, but yeah, up in there. You gotta get it above the, uh, that's the swing arm. Right there, I should be able to reach it from there. So, let me try that. Just, just to make it easier, these uh, oil breather tubes here, are st they stick through this hole right here. I'm just getting them out of the way. And there's a clip, this little spring clip here. I just bend it out of the way. Get these lines out of the way because they go right in front of that 12 millimeter banjo bolt. So I'm just pushing them off to the side here. Just push them off to the right, get them out of the way. You can see it goes right up the center in here. It's kind of in front of that banjo bolt. So, um, so that kind of gets them out of the way a little bit. I don't know if you can see my hand up in there. I got a ratcheting 12. Let's see right there. Right up there. I got a little short ratcheting 12 on it. Right up in there. Get a ratcheting 12 on it. Got to break that banjo bolt free. I, I got like a snap on open box end, open end uh, wrench. And you know, they're always on a bit of an angle. I had to put it on this way on top of the swing arm to get a piece of it and then break it loose. It was on really tight, finally broke it loose. I, I couldn't get it on this way because it was going up too high and, and hitting, the, hitting the top up there. So 
that's the way I broke it loose that way. And then I got a little ratcheting valve on it like that. It's loosened right off up in there now. Don't know how I'm going to get it back on or together. <laughs> I have no idea. We'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Next thing is I'm going to disconnect that linkage right there. Because I can see that being an issue, that linkage. Because uh, there should be a, a piston and rod in here, for, and this thing's got to come out. Could even be set on dowels as well, too. This linkage is in the way. I just can't believe nobody's ever mentioned that before in any of the stuff I've seen about this. But you can see the linkage going up and down, so I'm going to disconnect it down here. Now I'm, I'm on the right, the right side of the machine down below the swing arm. Here's those hoses again. I've pulled them out even farther now, got them all the way out of there. Usually one's a vent hose, one's usually an overflow hose for the uh, carburetors, and one's usually a battery hose, but I don't think they use battery hoses anymore. And you actually have a better, get a better view over here. Right up in there, there's the slave cylinder right there. And it looks like there's two uh, eight millimeter bolts on this side and one on the other side. And then um, um, the linkage, I'm gonna undo the linkage. It's right there, right there, yeah, right down below there. And I'm not sure what that sensor, I think that might be the uh, shifter, neutral sensor or speedometer sensor. I'm not sure what that is on the gearbox there. I can't remember. But uh, some guys say remove that to get it out. But often it, they're kind of welded on there. The plastic kind of melts into a little bit or they get stuck on it and they break. They break really easily. So I'm gonna try not to remove that. That's where the pink and green wires go in there. I'm gonna try to do it leaving it on. I've got enough, I believe, uh, little flex heads and extensions for my quarter inch drive ratchet set to get the three bolts off. I'm going to try to leave that on there. It would be easier if that was out of the way, but let me see if I can do it without removing it. First thing is I'm going to remove the shifter linkage and kind of notice the position of the linkage. If I put my ratchet on it, right here, there it is right square. So. You can see the angle it's coming out on. That's the position it's got to go back on. If I turn it too low, down here, up here, it won't work. So I get that off. I'll take that screw right out. Hopefully it'll slide right off. You can see it right here, right there. There it goes. So there's, there's the linkage hanging down there now. And that'll, that'll give me room. I'm gonna get these two uh, eight millimeter bolts off first. Right in there. And get my ratchet on it from the bottom. Like that. Yeah. Probably too loose to, uh, that's when you want a really fine geared ratchet. Snap on always ash, you know, six point or you want a fine fine geared ratchet or coarse geared ratchet fine geared ratchet's good for stuff like that we got you only got a short swing now i just have to get with my fingers i'm gonna put my phone down can't really see much but this is the one bolt here i think let's see i'm trying to get my uh you try to get your finger 
one finger, I can get two fingers in there, one finger on the bottom of the bolt and one on the top. And you just kind of keep spinning it out like that. It's too loose to get a ratchet on it. So you gotta get your, you gotta get your fingers on it. Put one at the bottom, one at the top. Just spin it out. There's the bottom one. And uh, the shifter one's a 10 mil and the uh, clutch are eight mil. Now, let's see if I can get out the top one. See, it's glare from the light. just by feel. <laughs> oh, I got it. Yeah, I got the button going the wrong way. There we go. Hopefully now I can get my fingers on it. <laughs> Don't know. What do you think? The queen is dead, good or bad? I say she's been dead for a while. Timing is everything. Oh, I can't get my other finger on that. It's almost out. It's like when the screw's really loose like that in there and you can't the ratchet won't ratchet, then I, if you can get your finger on the socket, you put pressure on the socket, and then the, then you can get the ratchet to ratchet. So I'm gonna try that. But it's just so loose in there. That it, it's so loose that it won't ratchet, so I'm gonna put my finger on it. Put pressure on it. Keep flicking the switch over though. It's almost done. That banjo bolt is going to be the hard thing, I think, get back together. These three bolts will be easy. That's got to be out by now. Just putting pressure on the socket so I can get the ratchet to click. Yeah, on the socket itself, yeah. <laughs> now, I've got it out so far. My uh, ratchet is pressed against the swing arm and I can't, I can't get it out. So now I gotta tighten it. <laughs> Hopefully I can tighten it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I gotta get the switch to flick over. There we go. So that didn't work. I gotta get it to the point where I can get the ratchet off. And this little ratchet won't release the socket until you push the button on the back of the socket right where it's rubbing. So I got different sockets. But... Oh, it's almost off there. Oh. 
going backwards now. Okay, got that off. Okay, now I can get my finger on it. I can get both my fingers on it. That's a lot of threads. Oh, it's got to be almost out. There it is. Okay. There's that. One more to go on the other side. I got my quarter inch flex head on there with eight millimeter socket, it, but it's tight. So I'm only going to be able to break it free and then uh, do something else. Socket's stuck on that's how tight that is. There we go. This is jamming against the swing arm as well, too, so. Might be able to just get this like this now that it's loose and just slowly turn it out. It's loose. I'll see if I can get my fingers on it. opened them of my eight millimeter wrench and I should have it out here like that. I was just kind of getting it on the end of the wrench like this and uh, turning it <laughs> because the frames right here the uh, swing arm so you can't really get a sock on it very well okay so we got the three of them out we got the banjo bolt loose now, let's see if it comes out. I think my son's my son's here with his Jeep, which isn't working right. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna have to hold on this. I just got a screwdriver in here. There's a boss there you can kind of pry on. And it, it popped out. And, well, 
hydraulic oil is all pissing out of there. On my hand, there's one of the banjo washers. Anyways, I gotta, my hands are covered in oil. I gotta put this phone down and do this. Okay, it just pulls down here and then that hose clamp, that hose clamp right there that I had the three hoses in, two or three hoses there, I had to bend it back in where it's supposed to be and then this was able to drop right down. Get that out of there. Okay, that's half the battle. We'll pop this apart, see what's going on. Where'd the hell to go? There it is. Okay. And get some compressed air and uh, we'll blow this apart. It looks like the gasket all came off and stayed on the clutch, which is good. I'll just put a little dab of uh, um, gasket maker or something on there. It, it's basically a dust seal. It's not retaining oil. So uh, let's... Uh, Pop this apart. I don't see any circlips in there. Hope not. We'll find out. I just put this in the vise, clamped it sideways on the front and back, not on the surface of the piston. And this just popped right out with the screwdriver. It was a little too hard to hold in my hand. Just lightly clamped in the vise and that popped out. That seal. Here's the kit. I think it was like 23 bucks American. I think that included shipping. I have to check, it might be 25 bucks with shipping. Looks like it gives you a little bit of uh, red grease in there too. Uh, inside here where the push rod, uh, the throw out rod for the clutch, there was a little bit of grease in here. That's what I'll put in there. It, it doesn't mix with the oil. Yeah, there's the new spring.
I'm going to put a little dab of this grease in there right now. Fingers a little bit too fat to get in there. A little bit of grease in there. Put the seal in first. It goes in pretty easy. Seal's in. And then this seal, the fat edge went towards the spring. The widest part of it, I should say, like that. See, it's wider here. That went towards the spring. Let me get some brake fluid. Put it I'm going to use a dot five synthetic fluid. It's purple. Put a little bit in there. Put a little bit on this uh, O-ring. Lubricate the cylinder. Lubricate the piston. And then you want to make sure you don't crinkle that O-ring over. That's working good. Okay. I'm going to get her back in there. They're saying put a, a light coating of uh, this rubber grease on the seal here. According to their instructions, and or brake fluid, uh, seals may appear loose, but once pushed out by the piston, this will make a perfect fit again. Use rubber grease and or brake fluid on the outside of the piston before inserting. Be careful not to pinch the seals, align the piston, and caution when inserting the seals, the piston, yeah. Okay, so that's ready to go in. I'm going to put just a light bead of or, uh, gasket maker, or three bond along the edge there. That's it. Okay, got a little light coating of three bond on the outside of that. I don't think it matters at all. It's basically, uh, there's no oil that can leak out. It's just a dust seal. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this back in. It has to go in from the right side, I would say. That's how it came out. Banjo bolt straight up. Got the linkage pushed all the way to that side, I think. That's how it came out. So I'm dropping this down. Dropping that down. I'm going to push the linkage all the way over that way. I think you can do it this way, but it's hard to hold it up.
there, it's in there. <clears throat> that spring's under some compression a little bit in there, so you gotta kinda wiggle it in and uh, make sure the, the push rod or the throw out rod is pushed all the way in, it was hanging out. I just wanna get a couple of these started. And I haven't touched the banjo bolt or anything up there. I don't know how I'm going to get that on. And the one washer fell off. I'm going to leave the two top washers on it. Reuse them. I just get some needle nose players on this and push it in. I got some right there. Oh, my. Get up there. <clears throat> Scalpel. Got that one started, got the bottom one started. I'll go get the other one on the other side started. And like I say, I think the banjo bolt's gonna be the tricky part because I, I don't think my fingers will fit in there. I'll figure it out. Get these as tight as I can get them with my fingers. Okay, I'll get these in, then we'll start on the other side. I'm going to try to get this one back in with these needle nose pliers in there. Not much you or I can see. You can't actually see in there. Got it in. Yeah. Let's see if I can uh, get it started a little bit with this on an angle. Yeah. <clears throat> Turn it with my with my wrench like this. Put try to get it turned a few times. Okay, I got them all the three bolts tightened up again. In there, you can get a quarter inch drive ratchet in this side to tighten it up. The other two tightened up easily. I got the uh, hoses all back where I found them. What, what's going on here? What's going on? Okay, hopefully that works. That's how I found those two hoses like that. There's a, a little clamp in here for them. And then there's a clamp up here. And there's one hose on that side. And then these three in here. 
this tie clamp tie clamp was already there. I just pushed it back on. It's pretty snug. I could put the oil filter back on, but no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. You can just see the uh, bottom of the banjo bolt right up there. Uh, yeah, there we go. Maybe right in there you can see it. And somehow I got to get a washer. It looks like it's sitting right on top of the hole. So if I can push it up and put the washer back in. I actually have a new washer to go in there. I'll be laughing. Ugh. Came with new washers. I'll put one new one in. So there's two hoses on the top of that. Uh, Slate cylinder. And the one hose goes up to the bleeder here, which is bolted to the, uh, the side of the bell housing. Because that's what I was thinking. Why is there two hoses going to the top there? Should be just one going up to the handlebar. But there's two. The other hose runs up to this bleeder. Okay, let me see if I can get this uh, washer on there. What I'm trying to do is push this up from the bottom with this uh, washer on it. And then get my finger up over the swing arm and just get a piece of it and push it over the uh, the, the boss where the bolt, I got the, I got the bolt pushed up into the air and hopefully I can set that on there and then slide the bolt down into it. I got it all back together and uh, you can see the shiny copper washer at the bottom there. I had to just uh, reverse this here one second. Yeah, so I kind of just had to stick my finger up in there and then with the needle nose pliers, just set that washer on top of the boss where the, uh, the banjo bolt goes inside at the top. And I, I pulled the, the hoses and banjo bolt up just enough that I could slide the washer under. And then I also had to loosen off the, uh, the bolt here that's holding the hose on, the bleeder hose. I loosened that off so it gave me some play because it must be a rigid hose and uh, I couldn't lift the bolt up. As soon as I loosened that up, I was able to push the bolt up out of the way, slide the washer in, and then the, the bolt is still inside the hoses with the washers on them already. Just the bottom washer fell off. Stuck the new washer in, and then I, I put my ratcheting 12 on the top and tried to tighten it, and it, it, it was just turning forever because it wasn't into the first thread. So then I got my hand in there and then wiggled it and pushed it till I got it down to the first thread, and then I was able to tighten it up. It's tricky. It can be done. And then uh, I was at Princess Auto, so I just went and bought one of these. They're kind of handy for uh, I Toyotas. I believe the Honda filter is the same size. It's a 60, 64 millimeter oil filter wrench. Um, I got it off with a great big pair of channel locks, and you can put it on with channel locks, but uh, I don't want to ding up a brand new filter. Uh, I just got a text there from a co-worker. Anyways, this new filter has already got the grease already on the O-ring, so I'm just going to spin that back on there. I could pour a little bit of oil in there. Maybe I will. I can fill it half full. Let it soak in a little bit. Oh, oh there's a trick to this thing. You got to... Pull this tab out of here, I guess. <laughs> this oil. Motu oil. 1040. <clears throat> pull it out like that, I guess. I'll fill this half full. Guess I, I won't. <laughs> There's another thing in there. It's 
half inch drive, but <laughs> you don't need to crank it like a half inch drive, just uh, right about there is probably all you need. Can we get it off? Filter's not in yet. The oil drain plug. I'm going to put a little bit of thread sealer on here. It looks like something's leaking oil down here, either the pan or this bolt. This stuff always stays uh, semi-pliable. It doesn't harden up. I won't put the belly pan on until I bleed it because a little bit of oil is going to leak down here or the lower panels I should say so that's it she's done just pour some oil in it and bleed her let's do that I got so much junk in this garage. to see from there but but I'm gonna pump it up here and crack it down there
If you can see in there, but you can see the bubbles. If the air's coming up, fluid's going down. Now I'll bleed it. Big gulp of air came out down there. <clears throat> There's a big bunch of bubbles came out there. That's what I'm looking for. <clears throat> when I did the Yamaha Venture there a couple of weeks ago, I bled it all, no bubbles, no foam coming out, nothing. And then I drove it for about a hundred miles. And by the time I got back, I could feel that it was getting just a little mushy. And then I bled it one more time, a big bubble came out and it's been perfect ever since. There's a big bubble there. Right here, I'm, I'm snapping it. That, that, that's like a vibration. It allows the bubbles to, makes the bubbles come out a little easier. Not really getting any air out down there. It's, oh, I can feel it's almost getting there. The lever's getting much stiffer. little foam. The clutch would work right now, I could feel it. There we go. Little volcano. It's, it's engaging right here, right now. Still some bubbles. Oh, yeah, that usually means it's pumped up when it uh, starts pumping like that. Whoop, yep, I'm barely even touching the lever. That should do it. Drive it for a bit and then uh, just bleed it one more time. It's too bad. I got the front wheel locked, otherwise, I would turn it so that this thing is uh, um, more level. <laughs> Uh, 
come on, I should have tightened up this side first. It's a little bit overfilled on this side. Nice and tight. Right there. Yep. See so if she leaks down overnight. She shouldn't. There you go. Beer of the day is Sleeman's 2.0. I thought maybe that meant to. Uh, 2% uh, alcohol, <laughs> I wouldn't have bought it. That wouldn't do anything for me. But I think it says it's two, um, two grams of carbohydrates. And I think it's four or 4.5% alcohol. Where is it here? 4% alcohol, a little on the light. For beers, like a Coors Light. Okay, that's it for this bike. Just a matter of uh, putting the lowers back on. Gonna top up the oil and uh, take it for a test drive. But before I, I do the test drive, I'm going to do the front forks. I don't want that oil pissing out all over the front uh, brake shoes and uh, brake pads and brake rotor. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty detailed uh, video. I'm doing that slave cylinder because I've watched a couple other ones on there. <laughs> One guy just said, oh, you got to take it off and it's difficult. Oh, here it is here. I got it off and then uh, puts it back on, turns his camera back on and, and says, uh, oh, there I'm done. <laughs> Didn't show me anything. So, because I kind of like to review... I don't own one of these bikes. I've never even... Well, I had I did own one at one time, but never had to do this to it. And uh, I had an ST1100. But... Uh, yeah, it's nice just to, if you can see, like, the problems I go through in trying to get it off and on, and it uh, makes it a little easier for you. But uh, you can always figure it out. You can always uh, get around it somehow. There's different tricks, too, you know, with that washer. Putting that washer on there, I was thinking that you could put some uh, two-way tape on your finger, on your wrench, on, on a pencil, you know, or a stick or something uh, to hold the washer on, and you hold it in place with your finger. Um, but I was able to get it in there with that long needle nose pliers, just hold it in position, put my put my finger on it, press down, and then it sat right on the boss. It just kind of slid it over and then pushed the banjo bolt down through it. That's the trickiest part. <clears throat> it would be nice if that banjo bolt stay, stayed on that bolt the whole time, but it didn't for me. Okay, I'm going to wrap this video up and... Uh, wonder why they always say, God save the queen. Does she need saving? she that bad what did she do what did she do when did she die it'll all come to light soon <clears throat>